Hi, it's Helen from Lumosia. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to remove acne and blemishes within Photoshop CC. It uses the healing brush tool, which is quite an easy tool to understand and get to grips with, but I'll take you through the different options and a few tricks how to get the most of it. If you do like the video, it'd be great if you could like it and also subscribe to the channel as we've got lots more videos all about Photoshop, Lightroom and photography in general. So if you could like and subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing and really support us. If you would like to um, work alongside me as I um, improve her skin, this is an image um, that I have downloaded from Shutterstock. At Shutterstock, you can actually get a 30 day free trial um, and I've put the link in the comments below um, so you can download it. And it's a 30 day free trial and you get 10 free images to download uh, and so that you can play around with at the same time. So let's get started. So the healing brush tool, the easiest way of accessing it is simply by pressing the letter, um, the key J on your keyboard and it will automatically select it for you from the toolbar. Uh, and the healing brush is actually this um, one here, which you can just see here. So it's selected it automatically because we press the letter J. And there's actually two main healing brushes. There's the, the kind of standard healing brush tool and there's something called the spot healing brush tool. I always used to use the healing brush tool um, as I found that it gave me the most, most amount of control over where the um, the skin was selected from or some or where the kind of the good area was selected from. However, I've recently started using the spot healing brush tool as I find it just gives better results and it's also a lot quicker to use and within a, a photography studio as we're working photographers sometimes we have to do things that are effective but also time, eff time efficient so quite often we do use the spot healing brush tool but to get started let's you look at the healing brush tool so with this one you have to select um, when you select it you select this area of good skin uh, that you want to use and replicate so you do this by clicking the, pressing the alt or option key and then clicking with your mouse at the same time so you'll see it's giving you like a cross hairs within a circle uh, and you just move that and when you've got some good skin like for example here i'm hovering here you just while well, still holding the alt or option key and you click at the same time and that's now selected so and then you literally just paint on wherever you want it to replicate to. So you just, just keep painting, keep scribbling, and it'll keep selecting from pretty much that same area. So as you move the crosshair, the little white cross moves with you, but this does mean that it can actually kind of copy um, something that you didn't actually want it to select. So for example, here it's selected a little freckle. So here and here, and it's recreated the same thing. And I've gone, just gone into the hair line here, which obviously I didn't want to do. So I'll just undo that by pressing the command and Z just to undo that last step. Um, and things so yeah as you can see it kind of you have to be the trick with using the healing brush tool is to keep selecting an area of good skin or whatever it is you want to come to heal out to heal so you just keep selecting and then it will look as realistic and natural as possible um, however if you're not careful it can give a slightly blurred effect so that's why it's really important to keep doing it really quite slowly so you can keep an eye on what you're doing and just be careful so it still stays looking natural so you just kind of build up that healing effect but as i said it does take a little time um and if you're not careful it can look a little bit kind of plasticky kind of because it kind of gives you an average of the pixels from wherever you're selecting so it just gives it a little bit kind of a, like a blurred look and that's one of the main reasons why um, I now actually use the spot healing brush tool um, because whereas the other one 
you have to select for yourself the area of good skin that you want it to replicate. With the spot healing brush tool, it uses content aware. So similar to the patch tool or something like that, but you, it basically with the content aware, it decides for you um, by looking at the pixels um, in the image as to kind of what, and it kind of makes a decision as to what it th Photoshop thinks you want it to do. So with the spot healing brush tool, you don't have to select any skin, um, any kind of good area. You literally just paint and you just, Let's scribble on any areas that you want it to heal. So it's a lot, lot quicker because you don't have to make the selections. And it also tends to give better results. I tend to use it um, with um, the content aware option up here selected. Um, but there is also a proximity match. For example, if I was to heal, so this area here where there's visible pores, and I use content aware, sometimes it might give a slightly blurred, yeah it has, so it's given it a blurred effect. So if I just undo those, and I change it to proximity match, and now maybe I want to get rid of here, if I do the same thing, you'll see it doesn't give the same blurred effect. So because it's with a proximity match, it's choosing pixels from around wherever you want to heal. Where, so it's not looking at the image as a whole, it's looking at the, just those pixels that are nearby. So it's just, it's a slightly different way of selecting things, but I tend to use content aware more as I find just the results are really good. Um, and it's also a, a considerably quicker than other ones. So I'm gonna crack on and edit the rest of the image. i um, just like to say I'm not going to worry about editing anything like shine or um, any of the bags under her eyes and things like that would be something we would do afterwards. Um, also when um, healing skin you do have to be careful not to take out anything like the kind of freckles which would take out someone's character unless of course they ask you to take out the freckles. Most people quite like the freckles because it shows their personality. Um, and often when we're um, editing um, a portrait for a headshot or something like that, we spend sometimes have discussions going, is that a freckle or is that a spot? Hmm, I'm not sure, what do you think? Uh, and so, yeah, very odd discussions, um, but it's yeah only in photographers, eh? So I'll do the rest of the image and I'll speed it up so you don't have to sit through it all, um, but I'll show you the after effects and I'll also show you, talk to you about what I would do after getting rid of the images, um, sorry, getting rid of the blemishes um, because there's a couple more steps that I would normally do and I'll just talk to you about what they are. So I'm gonna carry on now and, and get rid of these rest of the blemishes. So there I've got rid of um, pretty much the most of the blemishes. Now there still might be a couple of little ones, but because she's got a few freckles, sometimes it's hard, as I said, to see which are blemishes. I think that might be a blemish there um, and things. She has got a little bit of discoloration on her skin. Um, so for example, around her mouth here um, and general, it's still left some patchiness on her skin which is typical when someone's had really quite severe acne it leaves a uh, very much kind of red kind of patchiness and quite blotchy on their redness on their skin um, so that's something that I would get rid of afterwards um, and that for that uh, and also for the shine on her nose although actually for the just a little bit there the healing brush the spot healing brush would do a pretty good job as you can see, um, but for the bigger areas of shine and underneath her eyes, um, the bags under her eyes and that sort of thing, so up here, the shine here, uh, and general patchiness, I would use a process called frequency separation, which is it's an amazing process um, and thing to be able to do. Uh, it's a little bit more involved, so I'll do it in a separate video, uh, but I'll try and make it as easy as possible. 
um, as but it does relieve um, give mean that you can create that amazing skin um, while still keeping it looking natural um, so you keep the texture in but just give the really kind of soft beautiful skin like you see in the magazines and things so it's what um, when someone's editing a photo for a magazine that's this is what they would do so I'll put a link to that video as well so I hope that's all been useful for you. Um, as I said, it, it is a little bit of a laborious, time-consuming process, but it is well worth it, as you can see. And as you see, it's not really that difficult to do. It's just a bit, um, you just have to take your time and make sure that you kind of don't rush it too much. Uh, but it's well worth the effects. Um, so if you, we zoom out, we'll, we can see that generally, you know, she looks a lot better. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you'd be a lot happy with the image. So I hope the video has been useful for you. If you've got any questions or comments, please do let me know in the comments section below. And as I said, do like and subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out when we do some more videos. And we do videos on all sorts of things from Photoshop, Lightroom, as well as um, detailed photography tutorials as well. So thanks for watching and see you again soon.